Welcome everybody to the Kingdom and its Stories. We're delighted to have you here, either in just simply audio on the radio or listening to a podcast or watching our video podcast. And so we're delighted to have you with us today. And uh, I, I want to introduce you to a really very special guest today, uh, Gazachu Akaya. And uh, I, I, I always have trouble saying that last name, but I met Gazachu more than 25 years ago. He was a teenager. And I and Daryl Miller were in Addis Ababa um, and we were doing a conference for, um, for maybe, maybe 500 pastors and, uh, or maybe 500 to 700 pastors from the Evangelical Association of uh, Pastors there. And, and Gazachu and one of his friends who were teenagers, um, I had come to meet as young guys who somehow um, God gave them a passion for street kids. And uh, and it was amazing that they would actually go spend the night with those street kids. And sometimes they would take blankets without permission from their home uh, down to the street kids so the street kids could have something to cover them with at night. And uh, and they they began a ministry today which has grown, and I'll have um, Gazachu tell you a little bit about the growth in a little bit, but th this ministry is it, a perfect example of what in Harvest we call kingdom mathematics, which is when we give God the little that we have, and these kids as teenagers, Gazachu was a teenager then, didn't have much. I mean, have very little, but they took what they had and they took it to the street kids and gave it to God by giving it to these street kids. And today, the ministry has grown. Gazachu is not only leader of this ministry, which today is called Bright Star. Uh, at that time, it was called Wind Souls for God. And, uh, uh, and I'm just thrilled to be able to have you, Gazachu. Gazachu, tell us in an elevator speech version, who is Gazachu? Thank you so much, uh, Bob. It's uh, really heartwarming to listen when you talk about uh, old memories from 25 years ago. I remember also the day that we met. I will get back to you on that. Uh, uh, I, I, I was born in Addis Ababa, in the capital city of Ethiopia. Uh, with a bunch of children at home. We were 15, and it happened to be I, I'm number eight. Then I you have were seven. 15. You were eight of 15. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I have seven behind uh, and seven ahead of me. Okay. And that feels good. I'm, i I grown up surrounded, of course, in an economically and socially challenging neighborhood, and our family uh, uh, has been trying to put. Uh, you know, always food on the table, but my parents were really very strong in their faith, and they have been praying and also sending us to church, to Sunday school, that we could also exercise phase of sharing. Um, then um, when I was seven, eight, I started to sing at the church, and as a Sunday school choir together with my colleagues, and that also continued uh, when we were teenagers and when the Sunday school closed was too small to us, we created, uh, started a ministry, uh, uh, you know, called Cleaning the Compound, the, where I spend mo most of my time to clean together with my friends uh, at the church, at the compound, plant some flowers. And, uh, but yeah, that journey also took us, you know, once we thought, why not we go out clean the street? Why not we meet some people out on the street? Of course, that ministry have also took us to see the street children out on the street. And we we say that we, we fall in love with them and uh, not only serving them, but we try to become one of them and start to share, uh, uh, even though we, we have home to sleep, uh, home and roof, but we decided to, as you said, to go out and uh, uh, sleep there, to just them. to feel how they feel. 
And uh, it was scaring, of course. It's not as easy as I'm talking now, but that nights were so long. But we learned how 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 uh, important it is to share somebody's real life. Right. And uh, was my teenager. Uh, of course, then the, the ministry continued. You remember I met you just in the first or second year, second year uh, of our uh, our ministry right. life, a teenager. And today, uh, of course, 25 years, many things have happened. And I've also been uh, 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 serving here for the last 25 plus years. It will be 27, actually, next year. Wow. But, and so, uh, got married, and I got married, and have have children. My my wife is also uh, in the ministry, and my kids are growing. We adopted one foster care two, and biological three. That means we have six children now. They grown up, and my foster care daughter she got, got married and have also two children. Then I'm a grand right. young grandparents. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that, that uh, uh, and uh, been studying and uh, now I'm just to complete my doctoral leadership uh, leadership in ministry and I've, as I shared you God also gave me an opportunity to to sit in the city council as a senator for in the capital that I can promote uh, uh, how to demonstrate real love for the community and I also got an opportunity to sit in uh, a justice standing committee where I write, speak, and even share the real life and justice. And this is a, a very quick me for the last uh, 46 years. Yeah, uh, wow, you did a good job. Uh, let me ask you a question. In your ministry, tell me about the different programs, just briefly uh, review them, like how many schools, how many vocational training centers, et cetera. Uh, we started, as, as I said, with a service for the street uh, and children, and today we continue that. We have a drop-in center in the center of the city where uh, every day more than 150 street kids come to eat, to wash, and to sleep during the day. To eat, and we have... wash, and sleep. Yeah, wow. and we yeah. Have to cut their hair. They can take right. a shower. Okay. We, 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 we sometimes act like a barber. Uh, okay. shop that we can, we can clean them up that's our like the first contact center where we meet yeah. uh, boys from there we have uh, one uh, uh, drop-in center uh, transit center we call it where they can live between three months to one year and the next is uh, they have also a permanent house if they don't have a family or if uh, uh, they are not able to go back that's the street children ministry Okay. And we also have a ministry called Deborah Ministry. It's focusing on young girls who have been engaged in prostitution, uh, who have been, you know, trafficked uh, in the city and outside the city for, for uh, you know, uh, prostitution and uh, sex. And we try to stop that and to, to find a way out for them. We have a risking home for the girls. That's our third home, only where girls are living. Uh, uh, we also, you know, the street children, the root cause, it's one of the root causes, is the social and economical, and children are not going to school. Then we have the strategy of putting kindergartens in, uh, in, uh, in Islam areas and in, uh, in different parts of the, the country. So far, we have uh, four schools, uh, uh, and that schools are uh, helping more than... Uh, uh, 1,500 kids, and wow. we we give a full uh, service, food, clothing, and uh, uniform, and also education uh, uh, for free. Uh, okay, it's been 25 years. So yeah. have any of those kids that, you know, were in your schools gone on to, um, to high school and then even to college? Many of them, many of them, you know, quite many. Have joined even last last uh, last week we had a graduation and uh, we do have 22 bachelor students who went through our school and we had a joyful time and god has been blessing us through uh, these children but today they are not children uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So, so how many schools uh, does uh, Bright Star have now? It's uh, four. Uh, four uh, it's schools. Four, but we are partnering with government schools. That means our schools are for one thousand five hundred, but we have more than 200, 2,000 students different parts uh, in different okay. schools. All right. And you also have vocational training centers. Yes, uh, we. You know, for those who are above 16, we train them with uh, uh, cooking, hairdressing, beauty salon, and weaving, uh, also uh, embroidery and uh, sewing. And right. God has provided us with means. Uh, the vocational centers are owned by the ministry. And uh, every day we have a skill training. Uh, here in Addis, we have uh, three stations where we are uh, helping out the the teenagers to Incredible. use the funds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the other ministry we do is also, we help uh, young students at the university and college. You know, some of the college and university students, they have uh, difficulties economically, uh, especially the girls are forced out to do uh, something that they don't want. And we try to help uh, economically, like monthly, like the pocket money, and at the same time, we share God's love with them uh, okay. through different means. Now, you it's, told it's me in a brief conversation yesterday that, uh, are, are you still with us? Because that you, there we go. Okay. It looked like you froze there for a moment. Um, wow. uh, you told me that you had a goal of one soul for Christ a day. Um, Tell me about that. I think we've got a, an internet connection. We're called to save. Uh, 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 we are called to save souls. And our motto is, I, I share for my staff every morning. Today, we have a goal of one. And everybody runs for one. And if we are lucky, we get more than one. And... Okay. Uh, 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 but one is must, you know, if there is no, uh, you know, when we close up the day, we, we check if that is uh, done. Okay. Uh, mostly we are done and God gives us 365 souls every year. And Great. we are blessed. With that. It's not only actually bringing them to Christ, but it's to bring them home, to clean them and to wash them and to share uh, you were saying, you know, before we were stealing, we call it holy stealing, stealing clothes <laughs> from uh, Now uh, we have friends and uh, also different uh, people who are also providing clothes. Okay, all right. But uh, Gizachi, God is also, through your work, giving you the opportunity to participate in shaping government yeah. policy. Um, through serving on the city council, and also, is it in the federal government that you're on the judiciary uh, committee? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so how how does that how are you able to influence a public policy um, through your work with the government? Uh, you know, it's it's uh, God gave me the big opportunity to speak out in the media, in the city council. My my motto is always: children needs to have a safe place. And uh, you know, the last two years, even our city government started to provide school meal, which is a new happening in the city. Uh, even you know, the social care has been developing, and. Uh, we even draft now a policy that a child care should be one of the the, the, the responsibility of government, okay. and we, which I'm pushing every 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 session I sit in the city council. You will listen to me at least talking about women and children and uh, human rights. So God has given you an opportunity to be a voice. Mm -hmm. For exactly the poor, for the poor and the struggling within oh. your city. And what's the population of Addis today? 
Uh, Addis is quite big. You know, uh, the official is uh, nearly 5 million, but uh, it will be more than 7 million uh, if we, we count it. Okay, that's a big city. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, and so you serve on the city council as well as the judiciary committee. And uh, that that is absolutely amazing. Uh, I want to take just a moment to um, do a break here to let people who are listening and watching know that you're uh, listening and watching to the Kingdom and its Stories, where we interview leaders, and they don't have to be as well known as Gazachu, but a leader is somebody who takes initiative to be Jesus' hands and feet in their community, no matter how well known or how unwell known they are but just being jesus hands and feet so that when people see them they see jesus and uh and that's what gazachu and his team have been doing for more than 25 years in the city of Addis Ababa, and really now in many different other locations within the city so uh gazachu i have you got a story or two that you can tell us that that illustrates how reaching out to a, young people like this who are really struggling to survive, how how your ministry has impacted their lives? Can you tell us a short story or two? Uh, yes, uh, there there are many stories, but uh, just uh, the the one which just came to my mind is about a boy. I met I met him when he was uh, 12 years um, out on the street. He, he used to come to our drop-in center. And um, of course, I, sometimes you need to be a little bit hard on them to, to show love, you know, also to discipline them uh, and to study and to keep working hard and to continue school. Uh, God helped him and also helped us that he could complete his his uh, education, high school, went up to you know to study uh, to be as a dental doctor, and uh, of course the payback was uh, quite strong, Bob, because I went to his clinic and he he started to warn me I need to brush my teeth three times a day, if not uh, you know he will take an action. Uh, of course uh, he got married and uh, if you if I count to be a, a a grandparent, I might have uh, hundreds of grandchildren through the, the boys and the girls from the yeah. street, uh, families. Uh, you know, today we, we, I have friends who are working here with me in the leadership from the street. Many more to say. So some of the kids that you took off of the street or helped to get off the street are now on your staff. Sure, we have a number of them. Wow. Uh, and that, yeah. that, that gives me a warm heart. And that, uh, that showed me also that if we do something good, you know, it's, it's important that God's kingdom will be multiplied, as we learned from, from you, you remember, when we were a teenager boys. Right. I do remember that. I, mm -hmm. I remember going into your office one day, a few years after we had met you, and I yeah. saw your organizational chart on the wall and you were describing all the activities. And I said, Gazachu, how did you, how did this happen? And you mm -hmm. looked at me with surprise and yeah. it's like, why are you asking me this question? You're the one who taught us about kingdom mathematics. You should know the answer to that, <laughs> to that question. And I was embarrassed um, because you were absolutely right. God was the one yeah. who was intervening and multiplying your five loaves and two fish. Absolutely. Literally, what you guys were doing was taking the your lunch, what you had, and taking it to the street and sharing it with street kids. And um, Gazachu, we have a lot of listeners today who don't have much, what, how would you encourage them to give God what they have? 
Uh, you know, this question brings me back to our our childhood. Uh, the if we if we put it in in monetary value, we do have only five cents or fifty cents, and we say this is what we have, and we don't have clothes, for example. Therefore, we need to have the holy stealing, you know, from our brothers, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, it's like what we learned in the kingdom mathematics, you know, what you have in hand is more than enough for the Lord to multiply. And I have seen that in my life. You know, uh, the first lunch we brought for the street kids were sharing what we have. Today, uh, my chart here shows uh, today, for example, 1,668 meal has been distributed just today. 1,668. Meal has been distributed just today, and that means it's uh, it's it's not what you give; it's what you bring, and God can multiply it. Amen, amen. Oh, brother, yeah, wow. that's what what is going on in our ministry today, also, and yeah. we are thankful for His uh, grace and uh, blessing. But God doesn't see how much we have, and He sees how we want to give it. Yeah, amen, amen. For those of you who may have tuned in late, we're uh, interviewing a young man who was a teenager when I first met him in Ethiopia. And we have the opportunity to share with them the principles of kingdom mathematics. And in this principle, we talked about you bring God what you have. It doesn't need to be anything that in human terms would look big but only what you have and you give it to him and the way we give it to him is we give it to others who are sure. more needy than we are mm. and that's exactly what Gazachu and his team have been doing for more than 25 years and it's so exciting to to hear the story of how god has been faithful in multiplying their sacrificial giving. And I want to encourage all of you who are listening to do the same. Give God what you have. You may not think it's much, but that doesn't matter. Mm. What matters is your heart. Right. Give God what you have, and he will multiply. Gives that you. Um, I just... I am thrilled to be able to have you as a part of our kingdom and its stories. And I know there are so many more stories that you could tell. Um, and I remember one story. Um, and one time you found a young man in a garbage dumpster. That was his home. He was yeah. living in the dumpster. And you guys worked with him and brought him out, cleaned him up. He was afraid, didn't want to talk to anybody, but you loved him and helped him get back on his feet. And these kinds of stories, hundreds of them, thousands of them, you have to stay. And, and you just told us you served over 1,000 meals, 1,600 meals today one minute and um when i think of the food that you used to bring your own food to the street yeah. it's absolutely amazing to think of how god has taken your faithful service and multiplied it again and again and again god bless you my brother and god Thank bless you. your team and for those on your team who might remember me from a long time ago, give them my my greetings and tell them how much they inspire me to do more and to give, continue to give God what he has given to me to bless others. Not to bless myself, sure. but to bless others. And when we do that, he multiplies. God bless you, my brother. 
God bless you both. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.